Okay, now how does 51 work under the hood? Let's go through some basic concepts of what 51 is, how data is structured, and how it allows you to curate your data. I find it most helpful to start with looking at tabular data and understanding the difference between tabular and unstructured data. We're all familiar with data tables. They're very regular, very structured, very efficient for many different purposes. They have rows and columns and cells that correspond to a specific row column pair. And data tables are so prevalent, they're so pervasive that there's a slew of tools that allows you to work with them from SQL to Excel and Pandas and Polars and Tableau. But data tables are not always the best tool for the job. Before we talk about how 51 structures its data, let's take a second to talk about how data tables are structured. As I mentioned, data tables have columns. You can also think of them as fields. And columns represent specific attributes of your data. So if you have a data set consisting of house prices, you may have a column or a field for the number of bathrooms and another field or column for the number of bedrooms. Maybe you have one for the total square footage. And each house in your data set will have an entry in each of these columns for that particular attribute. Data tables also have rows. You can think of these kind of like samples in your data set. So continuing on with the house price analogy, each house would be its own row or sample in a data set. And each house would have an entry for the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms and square footage. And then at the end of the day, the price that it was sold for. You can index these tables. So here we are numerically indexing. Assuming that we are starting at index zero, we can get the row at index i equals one. You can get a subset of the rows and columns. Uh, so here we are getting the first two samples, so the first two rows, and we're getting the first column, the first field, which is the file path for each of those. And you can select by row. So you can select all of the data corresponding to a single sample. As I mentioned, data tables are great, but they may not always be the best tool for the job. Let's see why with this specific example. In this example, we have two images from the MS Coco dataset. The first image has a single bear, and the second image has 38 separate detections. These are people, handbags, umbrellas, and so forth. We can try representing these in a data table. We have a sample for each image, and we can try to enumerate the detections with columns. So we would have 38 different columns. And for the first sample, we would only have one of those filled. And the second sample would have all 38 of those filled. We can, when I say enumerate, maybe we want to put the label of the class detected in each of those entries. So we would have bear for the first detection in the first sample, and we would have in the next sample, umbrella, person, person, and handbag. But we actually run into another problem that goes beyond data sparsity here. And that problem is that there's no unique way of identifying the specific detections. So in this particular example, we have two person detections for debt one and debt two, but we don't know which is referring to which of the people in the image. In order to capture that information, we might need some other details. Maybe we need the location of that. Maybe we need a unique identifier for each detection. Let's try this approach out. Looking at the first image, if we only have a single detection, this is what the detection may look like if we try to capture that information. Perhaps we have a label as we had before. We also have a bounding box, which describes the location and size of that detection itself. Maybe we have another property for area. Maybe we have a competence score that goes along with the detection. But what if we try to apply this same pattern to the detections in the second image? This is what it looks like. Even scaled down by a factor of four, we get something massive. And we would need to have separate rows for all of these properties, a lot of sparsity. There would be a lot of data mangling and wrangling that would go into finding what you want. I think this shows us that data tables are not necessarily best for dealing with image data, especially because what we've seen here is just detections, which are one of the more tame types of labels that you can have on images. And this is not even thinking about videos or point clouds or other types of data sets. Imagine if you want to deal with relationships or key points 
or a variety of these and having all of these with different fields and attributes on your data. Data tables, probably not the tool for the job. But what can we use? Enter 51. 51 is built from the ground up to efficiently store, represent, and manipulate the unstructured data in computer vision applications. The schema of 51 has at its core the data set. So the data set is the analog of the data table in tabular data applications. And this data set class represents the data through a bunch of properties, these attributes, uh, and samples, which are more flexible than rows in a data table. Here on the right-hand side, we can see an example of a data set. And this data set consists of all of the images and all the associated data that goes along with them. Within a data set, we have a sample. And a sample corresponds to a single image or video or some other media file, plus all of the additional metadata and attributes that we need to understand what's going on in that media file. Samples are the atomic elements of a data set. Within a sample, we may have tags, we will have a unique identifier, we could also have other fields like predictions or ground truth, we could have the time of day that it was taken at, and so much more. Uh, 51's flexibility allows you to store a whole range of including custom fields on your samples. And one of the great benefits of the way that 51 stores its data is that this structure allows you to have embedded or nested fields. You can have arbitrarily complex and arbitrarily nested data within your samples and in your data set. In this example, we see that we have a metadata field. We've got an ID and we've got tags. We've also got a file path, which allows us to locate the particular image or video within our data set. But we also have these predictions and ground truth fields, which within them, have their own fields. So we might have a field for each detection. And having all these detections comprise a single predictions field, and a separate set of detections comprise a ground truth field. We don't have to have the same number of subfields within each field. We don't even have to have the same number of nestings within each subfield. This can go as deep as you want. Let's test our understanding once again. How does 51 store the raw media files associated with your data set? A, in a data table, or B, in a field? The answer is none of the above. If you were paying attention, you could probably infer that it wasn't stored in a data table. But you may have thought it's stored in a field itself. But 51 doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. 51 isn't trying to reinvent the best image file format or video file format. We play off of the strengths of other tools and storage formats within the space. And as such, 51 is a logical data set that points to the file path for the media files in your data set. When you put all these pieces together, a 51 data set might look something like this. You have the overarching data set. Within that, you've got a bunch of samples and you have tags for the data set as a whole. You can have samples that have different amounts of data in them, different fields within them. So here, each of the samples has an ID, but only two of the three samples have tags. Uh, we have metadata for each sample and a file path for each. And then we've got these field A and field B. And in this case, we see that field A and field B aren't even in the same order. This is slightly different from a data table where everything has to occur in the same structured order every single time. And we don't even have the same amount of subdata, same number of subfields within field A and field B, depending on the sample. But still, 51 allows us to efficiently query and get the particular data we want out of these data sets. In this example, we can get all of the data corresponding to and relating to a specific sample, and that includes all the ID, tag, metadata, file path, and all of the fields. We can also query for specific fields. Even though fields may not be in the same order in each of our samples, we can get all the data for each sample corresponding to a single field across the entire data set. And here's just a little bit more info about fields themselves. Uh, 51, of course, supports all of your favorite traditional Python types, things like lists and dicts and bools and ints and floats and strings. But 51 also supports a wider range of types, including a bunch of pre-built label types 
that have all of the semantic data that you might want corresponding to a specific machine learning or computer vision task. This includes things like regression, detection, and classification, as well as segmentations and key points and even heat maps. 51 also has some other pre-built types that you might find useful, including the file path from which the media type is inferred, as well as a list of tags, which you can use to, for instance, tag certain samples as being part of the test or train or validation split, as well as metadata, including for images, things like the image width and height, and for video data sets, the number of frames and so forth. But we can also do so much more like constructing arbitrarily complex queries based on expressions and matching on certain conditions. Here's an example. In this example, we are taking field B, but none of the contents within field B. And we are taking the last element within field A whenever there is one, but not field A as a whole. Something like this would be very hard to do if you were using tabular data to represent all of the data within your data set relating to computer vision applications. But with 51, this is very easy. 51 provides a syntax, a query language, that is built to help you to do this as quickly and easily and completely as possible. And in particular, the dataset view is a class that comprises these sequences of logical operations, these pipelines of logic that allow you to capture these subsets of your data.